Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, October the 28th. Today is the day the Church celebrates the Feast of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 19. Now when Jesus had finished these sayings, he went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan, and large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. And Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce, and to send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another, commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, is it better not to marry? But he said to them, Not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been born so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let the one who is able to receive this receive it. Then children were brought to him that he might lay hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. And again, today is the day the church celebrates the feast of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles. In the lists of the twelve apostles, Matthew 10, 2-4, Mark 3, 16-19, Luke 6, 14-16, and Acts 1, 13, the tenth and eleventh places are occupied by Simon the Zealot, or Cananean, and by Jude, or Judas, not Iscariot, but of James, who was apparently known also as Thaddeus. According to early Christian tradition, Simon and Jude journeyed together as missionaries to Persia, where they were martyred. It is likely for this reason, at least in part, that these two apostles are commemorated on the same day. Simon is not mentioned in the New Testament apart from the lists of the twelve apostles. Thus he is remembered and honored for the sake of his office, and thereby stands before us in eternity, as in his life and ministry on earth, in the name and stead of Jesus Christ our Lord. We give thanks to God for calling and sending Simon, along with Jude and all the apostles, to preach and teach the Holy Gospel to proclaim repentance and forgiveness, and to baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jude appears in John's Gospel, 14.22, on the night of our Lord's betrayal and the beginning of his passion, 
asking Jesus how it is that he will manifest himself to the disciples, but not to the world. The answer that Jesus gives to this question is a pertinent emphasis for this festival day. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. John 14, 23. Surely both Jude and Simon exemplified in life and death their love for Jesus and their faith in his word. Not only are we thus strengthened in our Christian faith and life by their example, but above all, we are encouraged by the faithfulness of the Lord in keeping his promise to them, to bring them home to himself in heaven. There they live with him forever, where we shall someday join them. Join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe, I believe I skipped our devotion. There we go. Our evening devotion with Martin Luther is about John 3.16. God loved the world in this way. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. To whom does God give his beloved son? God gives him to the world, the lost multitude who never deserved it. They could only expect to remain lost and condemned without him. God gave his son to the lost so that they might be saved. Then what should you do for this loving God in return? Nothing. Don't go on pilgrimages. Don't do this or that good work. Instead, simply believe in Christ alone. Then you will be able to get rid of your old nature and cling to him. Your faith, of course, should be the kind that produces good works. You cannot take hold of this gift, the Son of God, with your hand. The Son of God cannot be contained in a jar. He is only grasped with the heart and by faith. When this gift comes into your heart, when you believe in Christ with your whole heart, then you won't be the same person. Even if you were once a thief, an adulterer, or a murderer, you will become a new person, for you have the light in your heart. What the Lord Christ wants first and foremost is your heart, a heart that believes in him alone. God wants your best, not your mouth or your hand, but your heart. He wants you to be righteous on the inside. When you believe in Christ, your heart becomes clean. Peter says that faith cleanses hearts, Acts 15.9. That same faith doesn't permit you to be arrogant or proud. For when the heart is cleansed, the eyes, hands, feet, and all other members are also cleansed. You will act different, differently than before. Faith won't permit you to be a sinner, fornicator, or adulterer any longer. So your entire life will reflect what's in your heart. Now we join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as always on Wednesdays, our Wednesday prayer is the Shorter Litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles. From your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death. Good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. 
to comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you chose your servants Simon and Jude to be numbered among the glorious company of the apostles. As they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so may we, with ardent devotion, make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our shorter meditation with Martin Luther is based on Romans 4.19. Abraham did not weaken in faith when he, was, when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Faith wins. Thus Abraham killed reason by faith in the word of God, in which offspring was promised to him from Sarah, who was barren and past childbearing. Reason did not immediately assent to this word in Abraham. Surely it fought against faith in him and regarded it as something ridiculous, absurd, and impossible that Sarah, who was not only ninety years old now, but was also barren by nature, should give birth to a son. Faith certainly had this struggle with reason in Abraham, but faith won the victory in him. It killed and sacrificed God's bitterest and most hate harmful enemy. Thus all devout people enter with Abraham into the darkness of faith, kill reason, and say, Reason, you are foolish. You do not understand the things that belong to God. Matthew 16.23 Therefore do not speak against me, but keep quiet. Do not judge, but listen to the word of God, and believe it. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.